In the next two videos we shall review all possible joints, and in the first part we shall start with classics. Maybe you are familiar with this picture. It's rather old, but nevertheless it's nice. It shows all joints together with graphical representation and some hints on SQL code. So we have inner join, left outer join, exclusive left outer join, right join, exclusive right outer join, full outer join, exclusive full outer join, cross join and exclusive cross join. And now we shall see them all in details. To demonstrate all these joins we shall use these tables. Here they are for MySQL, MSSQL Server and Oracle. We have a table storing information about rooms with a room identifier, a room name and the space in the room. And we have a table describing computers with computer ID, the information about the assignment of a computer to a room and a computer name. In these tables we have the following data. We have 5 rooms, 3 empty and 2 non-empty. And we have 8 computers. 3 computers are not assigned to any room for now. These 2 computers are assigned to this room. And these 3 computers are assigned to that room. And let's begin our journey to the world of joints. And we shall start with inner join. We have to show how computers are distributed across rooms. You see that in the expected result there are no empty rooms and no unassigned computers. The solution is the next and it's the same for all three DBMSs. We just have to select data from this table and this table and we have to join the tables and the join condition is that the value of this field from the first table is equal to the value of this field from the second table. And also please pay attention that nobody ever writes the inner word. All people just write join and that's all. And this is how it works in visual form. Let's assume that the DBMS scans this table first. It doesn't matter, it may start with this table, it really doesn't matter. What matters is that the DBMS is looking for pairs of values. This value is paired to these values. And that's how we get these two lines. This is the value from here, this is the value from here and this line is duplicated because it has two matches from that table. The same operation is repeated for this line. It has three matches from this table and that's how we get these three lines in the final result. But these three lines do not have any match from here. Neither these three lines do not have any match from here. That's why they do not go in the final result. Now let's assume we have to show how computers are distributed across all rooms, either occupied or empty. Here we shall use left outer join and this is the expected result. You may see empty rooms here. The only difference from the previous solution is that we've added this left keyword here, here and here. And once again no one ever writes outer keyword. The visual explanation is the next. The first part is the same as for inner join. The DBMS is looking for pairs of values. So here they are and we get these two lines. And here they are and we get these three lines. But then the interesting part begins. You may see that this table is on the left side of join keyword. And this table is on the right side of join keyword. As long as this is left outer join, the DBMS is working with this table, not this. So DBMS tries to find matching values for these three lines. As we can easily see, it cannot find any matches. Nevertheless, the DBMS takes these three lines and puts them here. But as long as they do not have any matches from the right table, instead of those matches the DBMS puts null values here everywhere in all columns. And that's how we get our final result. But what if we want to show only empty rooms? Then we have to use exclusive left outer join. And here is our final expected result. You may see only empty rooms here. To achieve that result in all three DBMSs we are using the same query. And we use a query for our left outer join everywhere here and here. But we add this condition that this field should contain null value. The visual explanation is the next. 
The DBMS tries to match records from the left and the right table, but it remembers about this condition that this field should contain null value. Here is this field. And you may easily see that for this record it is not null here, and for this record it is not null here, so those matching pairs do not go to the final result. But for these three records there are nulls here and that's why all those three records go to the final result with these nulls here matching this condition. Now imagine we have to show not all rooms but all computers. And those computers may be either assigned or unassigned. And they both are here in our final expected result. The only difference from left outer join is that we use right keyword here. And for all three DBMSs all queries are the same. Once again we have a table standing on the left side and a table standing on the right side. But this time we have right outer join. That's why the DBMS works with this, the right table. Of course it looks for matching pairs from here and here. It finds those pairs and puts them to final result. The same happens with these three lines and this line and it produces this part of the result. Then the DBMS is trying to find matching pairs for these three lines. It cannot find anything, but nevertheless it took these three lines and puts them here. And as long as there is nothing corresponding to these three lines from this table, we have nulls instead of some values here. And that's all, that's our final result. Now let's show all unassigned computers. Here they are. We have to use exclusive right outer join. So for all three DBMSs we use our classic right outer join query. And then we add such condition that this field should contain null value. The visual explanation is the next. The DBMS detects matching pairs for these lines. And also it detects matching pairs for these lines. But it remembers about this condition. This field RID should contain nulls. But here uh, we see not nulls. But here we see one, two, that's not nulls. But then the DBMS starts working with these three lines. And of course as long as they do not have matching pairs from here, that RID field, here it is, contains null values. And that's how we get our final result. Now let's show all rooms and all computers. You may see that here are non-empty rooms, empty rooms, assigned computers, unassigned computers. All the data is here. One may easily see that such result may be achieved with inner join. This part may be achieved with left outer join. And this part may be achieved with right outer join. Funny fact that even with the latest versions my SQL does not support full outer join. So we have to use left outer join, right outer join and then we have to union the results of these two joins. Both Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle support full join so the syntax is much simpler here. And here is the visual explanation. The DBMS finds these matching pairs and produces these two lines. Then it finds these matching pairs and produces these three lines. Then it takes these three lines and puts them here. As long as these lines do not have any matching pairs from here, instead of that matching pairs we see nulls here everywhere. Then DBMS takes these three lines and puts them here. And again, as long as there are no matching pairs from this table, we see nulls instead of some useful values. And that is how we get our final result. But what if we want to show only empty rooms and only unassigned computers? Here they are, empty rooms, unassigned computers. We may use exclusive full outer join. With MySQL we have to follow the same approach. We use left outer join, we use right outer join and then we union the results of these two queries into one final result. With Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle the approaches are the same. We use full join here, full join here and we add such a condition that either this field should be null or this field should be null and the same condition is here. And the DBMS works the following way. 
As long as this record has matches from here, we see that this field CID, here it is, does not contain null values, no nulls here. And that's why these records should not go to the final result. The same for this record and these matching pairs, once again not nulls here, and it doesn't go to the final result. But these three records do not have matching pairs from this table. So we see CID field and we see nulls here and that's why these three records are in the final result. And as long as these three records do not have matching records from here, the RID field, here it is, contains null and so these three records are also here in the final result. In the next example we have to show all possible combinations of rooms and computers. And you may see that here are the five records for the computer one and five corresponding records for each room. Here are five records for the next computer and also five records for each corresponding room. Mathematicians call this result the Cartesian product. And we may achieve that result the same way in 3D BMSs but with two variants. With the second variant we may use cross-join syntax and with the first variant we may just use comma, nothing more. Also please pay attention that there is no on section here, no on section here. Because when we want all possible combinations we have nothing to match. And it works the following way. Imagine that DBMS starts with this table, it doesn't matter, it may start with this, it really doesn't matter. But nevertheless, the DBMS takes a record from here and uses all records from this table to find such a combination. Here those combinations are. Then the DBMS will take the second line and also will combine it with all lines from this table. Then it will take the third line and repeat the same operation for that line. And so on and so on until we get the final result. And now we've reached the final join in this video. Exclusive cross join. Imagine that we have to show all possible rooms computers combinations, but we must not show current computers assignments. We may see that this computer A is placed in the room 1, so here it is, four records for that computer. And we may see no that room 1 here. So that's the except current result. Here we also have for all three DBMSs the same approach. And also we have two variants. We may either use cross join syntax in the second variant or we may use just comma in the first variant. But then we have to add the condition telling us that the room identifier should not be equal to the current location of a computer. And it works the following way. Our condition tells us that this field value should not be equal to this field value. But for these records those values are equal. That's why this record doesn't go here. But when the DBMS takes the same value from here and tries to compare it with this value, this value, this value, this value, those values are not equal. And thus we get these four records here. Then the same operations will be repeated for all records from this table. And that's how we achieve our final result.